Let's have a look at the first case study where we will model the buy and rent option for one apartment. Let's imagine that John is considering investing in an apartment that he wants to rent. He will be using a mortgage loan to finance the purchase and we will obviously have to model his cash flow. So a few information about him before we move on to the Excel model where we will try to reflect the whole business. So he lives in Poland and he considers buying one small apartment in Warsaw. He will put 20,000 of his own money into the investment. So the rest will be financed through a mortgage loan. And uh, on top of that, we know that the loan duration will be roughly 40 years and he will pay a fixed interest rate of 4%. He will be using a fully amortized loan and we're going to try to reflect that in Excel as well. I will also show you a version where there is a variable interest rate so you can have a look at both as well. So now let's try to estimate how much he can earn, how much cash flow he can generate over the course of the, the 20 years. So we're going to see how his cash flow will change in each and every year, starting from the year one where he's purchasing the apartment till the year 20 where loan should be fully covered and he can keep the apartment or sell it to somebody else. So let's move to the Excel model. Let's have a look how we can model the buy and rent business model in Excel. So please open a file attached to the lecture, which is called buy and rent one flat. And here you will see in the master sheet, as always, a table of content. We're going to start by looking at the value of the property in time and also looking at the tax that you may have to pay after you sell the property. Then we will look at the loan. In this case, we're going to use the fully amortized loan, assuming fixed interest rate. However, we have also created an option for you to have a look at how we would model it if the interest rate was variable. At the end, we're going to use all this information to simply model the cash flow from renting an apartment. So we're going to see how the cash flow of John will change by years. So let's have a look at the property. So the property you can find in sheet property or just go through the link here. And we start by modeling the value of the property in time. So every column is a uh, one year. So column J is the first year, column P is the seventh year up to the year 20. So this is our perspective since the loan is 20 years. And we have the value of the property calculated as a multiplication of the price per one square meters and the size of the apartment. The apartment is very small, so it's 45 square meters and it would cost us 135,000 US dollars to buy it. Then, as you can see, this value changes as the price per one square meter changes. This is due to the fact that we have assumed an increase in price in row 7 equal to 2%. All the fields in blue you can change. So if I change it, for example, to 3, then obviously the prices will change here as well. Now, apart from that, obviously, we have to bear other costs after we bought the apartment. So we try to estimate the money for the renovation in row 10. And this is simply multiplication of the price per one square meter, which we assume to be $600. And then the size we have from previous data. So we would, on top of the 135000 that we need to buy the apartment, we would have to spend 27000 And finally, there may be some taxes fees due to the fact that you are buying the apartment. So we calculate them by looking at the value of the flat and then assuming that they would be roughly equal to certain percent, so 1%. So in other words, we would have to pay $1,350. So that's when it comes to the property. And then we also may be forced to pay a tax after we sell the property. And this is what we try to estimate in the sheet tax CG. Here we have a repetition of the value of the flat from the previous sheet and we try to estimate the increase in the value of the property. Let's also have a look at the tax that we may be forced to buy due to the increase of the value in the flat once we obviously sell the flat. So this we try to estimate in the sheet tax CG. And here we have a repetition of the value of the flat calculation. Then in row 11, we try to map how the value of the property increases. And on the basis of that, we uh, try to calculate the potential tax on capital gains. So the way you should read it is the following. If we look at, for example, at the year of fall in column M, you will see that the value of the property has increased by 8,000 because the property should be worth roughly 143 and we bought it for 155,000. 
Now, if we sell in year four, this means that we would have to pay a tax of 20% uh, on capital gains, so on the increase in value. So this would be equal to 1.7 thousand of US dollars. And we do it for each and every year. If it was for year 20, then it will be 12,000 because the increase of value would be 61,000. So that's in short, let's move to modeling the loan. We're going to look at the fully amortized loan with fixed interest rate. Now let's have a look at how we would model the loan for the purchase of this flat. So let's go to the sheet where we model the loan. And here we will have a fully amortized loan with a fixed interest rate. We start by calculating the initial loan mortgage size in row 5. And this is simply a sum of the things we have to spend money on, given that we are buying the flat, the apartment. So this is the value of the flat, so the purchasing price. Then we have to put some money for renovation. There are also some taxes to be paid. And finally, we deduct from that the own contribution equity investment. In other words, our down payment. So in total, we have to spend the 163,000. However, since 20,000 will come from our own pocket, then it means that the initial size of the loan mortgage will be just 143,000. Obviously, I can uh, alter change the equity investment. So how much I put from uh, my own pocket and this will impact the initial size of the loan. So if I put here 40,000, obviously the sum of the initial loan size will change. Now, given the initial loan size, we are able to calculate the annual loan payment and we do it in row 11. This is done using the parameters for the loan. So number of years, duration of the loan, interest rate. So 4%, as we said, it's fixed one. And then we have the initial loan size that we have just estimated. This means that we'll have every year pay $10,548 to repay this loan. We can calculate it using the formula that you've got here. So this is the mathematical formula from the annuity, or you can use an Excel function, which we have here. So this is PMT. And then as a first parameter, you put the rate, then you put the duration of the loan. So the 20 years, and then we have the initial loan size. So how much we are borrowing today. And you also have to remember that you have to put the minus sign before the formula if you want to have it in positive values. So you can use either this function or that function, both are fine. But moving on, let's have a look at the interest paid. So interest paid, we calculate in a sim simplified manner. So we look at the loan at the beginning of the year and we have interest rate of 4% and this is the interest uh, we will pay. So part of the annual loan payment that will go to the payment of the interest. And then we have to calculate how the loan will look like at the end of the year. So we've got at the beginning of the year, that we borrow 143 in the year number one. And then we calculate how much of the principal of the loan will be done. And this is done simply by looking at the annual installment paid, so 10,000. And then we deduct from that the interest paid. Since we are paying 10.5 thousand every year, and uh, in the first year, 5.7 goes to interest paid, it means that the remainder, so 4.8, is going to the principal repayment. Therefore, the loan is going down from 143 to 138,000 next year. So this is how the loan changes. Obviously, at the very end, it will be equal to zero. So this is the way in which you can, in a very easy manner, model the whole loan. In loan V, you've got uh, the very same option, but the only difference is that we actually have a variable interest rate. So I can change it at some point and this will impact the annual installment paid. So for example, if I change this to 3%, the annual loan payment will go down. If it's up, then obviously this will go up as well. So you can use both of them. In the cash flow sheet, we are using the, the fixed interest rate. So if you wanted to use the variable, you would have to change this in, in the cash flow sheet. So let's finally have a look at the cash flows that the buy and rent model will generate. So let's have a look how the cash flow from buying and renting the flat will look like. So we go to the sheet cash flow from renting. And here you will see that we start by looking at how the rent will look like. So the rent we received by year. So for example, in year number one, it will be 12,000. And then in year number 10, it will be 20,000. The rent received, we calculate by looking at the monthly rent after taxes and multiplying by number of months with tenants. We obviously assume that there will be one month without tenants for some uh, random reasons. It can be lower or higher. You can change this assumption here as well. 
Then when it comes to the monthly rent after taxes, we calculate it by looking at the monthly rent before taxes. So what the customer, the tenant pays to us. And then if we have to pay some taxes, we obviously have to deduct it here. We have here built in increase in price of 6%. And therefore, as you can see, the monthly rent before taxes goes steadily up. So from 1,200 to almost 2,000 in year number 10. Therefore, the rent receipt is going up. If you see different increase in price, obviously you can alter it here. So for example, now I change it to 3%. Now let's move to the additional charges. So we assume that we're going to be spending a certain amount of money on the apartment due to water, electricity and other charges. So we assume that it will be $150 per month. So in other words, uh, we're going to be paying 1.6 thousand in the first year. And this obviously goes up as the inflation goes up. Again, here for the monthly charges, we assume certain increase equal to what we had when it comes to the rent. Then we have repairs and maintenance, and we estimate it by looking at the value of the flat, the current one, so it's going up, and therefore also the repairs and maintenance goes up as well. And we have a certain percentage of value spent on this activity. We assume this to be 1%. You can again modify it depending on what is the state of the apartment. Once we have all this data and the data on the loan as well as on the potential tax to be paid, we can finally calculate the cash flows. And this is what we do in row 23. So we've got the rent received as a positive cash flow and then additional charges. It's an outflow, so it's a negative cash flow. The same goes for provisions for repair and maintenance, annual loan payment. And we have two things which we'll discuss in a minute. So the sell value of the flat as well as the tax paid on the capital gain. As you see, the cash flow for the first three years is negative. So in the first year, we will spend 1.5 thousand more than we will get from the rent. But around year number four, we are already positive. And then this continues. And for example, if we look at the year 14, so column W, we are generating almost 10,000 in positive cash flow. And this is mainly due to the fact that we have a fixed annual installment and the rent is going steadily up, reaching 25,000. Now, in the last year, in order to be able to calculate how much we will be able to make out of that, we assume that we're going to be selling the property. So we bought it for 135,000 and we are selling in nominal value for 196,000. And on that, we have to pay a tax. Therefore, you have an extra cash flow in the last year. And this is equal to 203,000 US dollars. Finally, we've got a summary of nominal value. But more interesting is to look at the NPV and IRR and also at the NPV breakdown. So we will make in terms of NPV on the 20 years, assuming discounting rate of 4%, $159,000. So it's uh, quite okay. The internal rate of return, it's 46%. And then when we look at the NPV breakdown, we will see that uh, in terms of rent received in net present value, we'll get uh, 278,000. The additional charges will be equal to 38,000. Provisions will be 21,000, then annual installment paid it's 143,000. The sell value of the flat at the end will be 89 in nominal value. And finally, the tax to be paid in nominal value is equal to 6,000. So that's in short. In the next lecture, we'll discuss also what we got from here and how you can interpret this data. Let's summarize what we have done so far. So we first modeled the purchase of a property that the purchasing price was 135,000. On top of that, we had to spend some money on renovation and taxes and fees to be paid. Majority of that is financed through a fully amortized loan with a fixed interest rate that we have estimated in the sheet loan F. And as you can see, we have taken 143,000 for that. On the basis of that, we were able to estimate our cash flows. So we have modeled the cash flow on renting, additional charges, provisions and repairs, payment of the loan. And obviously we had to add back the sell of the flat in order to be able to see fully all the cash flows. In summary, we discovered that the net present value of this investment is equal to 159,000 and the IRR is equal to 43%, which is a pretty good result. And now we also had a look at the NPV breakdown. So in other words, we presented all separate cash flows in the present value. So for example, rent received in present value is equal to 278,000, whereas in nominal value, it will be closer to 441,000. 
So this enables us to analyze in not only the size of the NPV, but also the, the sources of this NPV. So let's go to the sheets slide where we will see the NPV breakdown in a graphical form. So here we can see the very same data. Uh, the only difference is that they are in a thousand. So as you can see, we'll receive a net present value rent equal to 278,000. From that, we deduct the additional charges, provisions for repair and maintenance. And obviously we have to repay the whole loan. This leaves us with cash after loan repairs and current expenses equal to 75,000. However, on top of that, we have to add back the value of the flat expressed in the net present value, which is equal to 90,000. And also we have to remove the tax that we'll have to pay. In total, we will gain 159,000. Roughly half of that is cash after all the payments and the rest is the value of the apartment. Now, you will probably notice that the value of the apartment is 90 in present value. Despite the fact that we have paid 135,000 for the apartment in year number one. And this is due to the fact that we uh, are using interest rate discounting of 4%, whereas the property is increasing with a 2%. So the net present value in such case will always be lower than what we've got today. But this also means that even if the net present value is going down, you still can make a viable business decision when you invest in the buy and rent model. So that's in short the whole model. Have a look at that. And as always, if you have any questions regarding what we do here, please let me know by posting those questions into discussion field or email me directly in Udemy. So let's move to the next case study.